the most exciting places to be in the garden at this time of the year in early summer is the desert wash because all the spiky and spiny plants, if they're going to flower, this is when they'll do it. And one day you'll come and you walk past them and there's not a sign of anything. Two days later, there's a flower spike about six inches tall. Three weeks later, it's nearly six feet tall. Yes, they grow as quick as that. And here we have a most wonderful natural looking carpet of blossom from Geranium incarnum, which is the hardy annual geranium. It's a Mediterranean geranium and has these lovely little mauve flowers. And of course, where would we be without the Californian poppy, a Schultzia californica, absolutely blazing on a hot day. And it really does add to the atmosphere in this area. If you sort of look over my shoulders, you'll probably notice a rather arresting looking plant with red stems and it has kind of primrose hanging um, little tiny flowers and shrimp pink bracts. Well, that's a plant that I've wanted to grow for years and thought that I would never be able to. It comes from Mexico and it rejoices in the name of Bechonaria yaccioides and it's absolutely stunning. With that, we've got puyas, which are bromelade, bromeliads, um, hardy bromeliads from South America. They come in a range of colours, but most noticeably of all is a puya called Puya alpestris, which has three petal flowers, a gorgeous, gorgeous, rich turquoise, bluey green and orange anthers. In its native habitat, it's pollinated by hummingbirds, but here it's pollinated by bees. They absolutely love it. Well, here it is, it's actually flowering. Puya berteroniana, or as it's known in the high Andes by the local name of Chaguarelo. What the heck that means, I have no idea. But anyway, it has the most wonderful turquoise, three petal flowers with bright orange anthers. And just look at the size of this spire. Absolutely fantastic. But, there's always a but. It's a monocarpic plant, so this whole rosette, after it's flowered, will die. Now it's very unusual to find one of these with actually four spikes of flowers as we've got here. And I can remember one flowering in the Eden, Eden Project a few years ago and they said it would flowers once every hundred years. What a load of rubbish. It flowers once and then dies. But it makes masses of young rosettes around the edge, underneath this skirt, a very, very thorny foliage, spiny foliage, absolutely vicious. But those rosettes, they will flower in subsequent years when they built up enough, enough strength. And that takes probably three to five years. So all is not lost. Here I am in front of Nolinia longifolia. Fifteen years ago, Graham was given a plant along with two other gardeners. Unfortunately, they both lost theirs, but ours has lived and it's here in the desert. And when I say success story, if you watch the top of my head, you'll see what I mean. Because this plant, this year, has two enormous flower spikes coming out of the top of it. The great thing is that it also has two children. It's got a, an elderly child and a younger child growing at the foot of it, so that we now have ensured future generations of this fantastic plant. Like most plants growing here in the desert, with a rosette on a stem, when it flowers, the rosette that's flowered dies, but it leaves behind offsets. And these are normally in the form of a pair. So one becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, and so on. So with this going on behind me, we could have a whole forest of these in the future years. I'm standing here and it's just like being in the middle of a beehive because this is Echium pinanana, endemic to the Canary Islands. It's one of those strange monocarpic plants which means that it makes enough strength to flower, set seed to ensure another generation and then the whole lot dies. But whilst it's living it is truly, truly spectacular. All of these wonderful little blue flowers, they, you see that they actually, if you look closely you can see that they age to pink and absolutely humming with bees. So it's a wonderful plant to have in the garden um, to encourage bees. And these are not honeybees. These are all forms of bumblebee on this particular plant today. Normally, in a hard winter, you would lose this plant. It's not frost hardy. And in 2010, when we had a hard frost, we lost all of our Echium pinanas. And it's taken five years for the seedlings that then germinated the year following that bad winter to flower. And this is one of them. And I reckon that's probably about 11 or 12 feet tall. And also we have... <laughs> Sorry, it went!